I can't tell if we can see the finish line. We're on problem number 31 of physics GRE GR0177. Positronium is an atom formed by an electron and a positron, which is an anti-electron. Uh, it is similar to the hydrogen atom with the positron replacing the proton. If a positronium atom makes a transition from the state with n equals 3 to a state with n equals 1, the energy of the photon emitted in this transition is closest to. Now let's first look at the reduced mass of hydrogen, which equals the mass of the proton times the mass of the electron divided by the quantity mass of the proton plus mass of the electron. Now that's roughly going to equal the mass of the electron. The reduced mass of positronium, however, is going to equal the mass of the positron times the mass of the electron divided by the quantity of mass of the positron plus the mass of the electron. Uh, and that's going to equal the mass of the electron divided by 2 uh, because the mass of the electron equals the mass of the uh, positron. So we know that E equals P squared over 2M. Uh, which is uh, Hamilton's way of expressing the energy. Uh, so E is going to equal m squared v squared over 2m equals mv squared over 2, which is everyone's uh, usual way of looking at it. So the ground state, electron, energy, and hydrogen, uh, everybody should know, and we just have to memorize, equals 13.6 electron volts. Half of the mass means half of the energy, so 13.6 electron volts divided by 2. Using the Bohr model transition from n equals 3 to n equals 1, uh, the change in energy equals 6.8 electron volts times 1 over ni squared minus 1 over nf squared, where ni is the initial n and nf is the final uh, n. And so delta E is going to equal 6.8 electron volts times the quantity 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 3 squared. Uh, again, the change in energy is equal 6.8 electron volts, then minus 6.8 electron volts divided by 9. So the change in energy is going to equal 6.8 electron volts minus 0 0.8 electron volts. That is going to equal 6 electron volts. That is answer A. Number 32. If the total energy of a particle of mass m is equal to twice its rest energy, then the magnitude of the particle's relativistic, relativistic momentum is, and so let's apply our relativistic energy equation where E squared equals P squared C squared plus M squared C the fourth. So E equals 2MC squared. Well, 2MC squared, that quantity squared equals P squared C squared plus M squared C the fourth. Uh, so M, 4M squared C the fourth equals P squared C squared. So P squared equals 3M squared C squared and P equals the square root of three times MC. That is answer D. Number 33. If a charge pion that decays in 10 to the minus 8 seconds in its own rest frame is to travel 30 meters in the laboratory before decaying, the pion speed must be most nearly. So delta S squared is going to equal delta X squared minus delta C squared T squared. And delta S uh, is our change in our space time interval. Uh, so in the pion zone rest frame, delta x is going to equal 0. So delta s squared equals 0 minus delta c squared t squared. So delta s squared is going to equal minus c squared times 10 to the minus 8 quantity squared. 10 to the minus 8 is the quantity that we're squaring. And that's going to equal 9 times 10 to the 16 times 10 to the minus 16 equals negative 9 meters squared. Uh, the space-time interval is invariant, so delta S squared is going to equal delta S prime squared, uh, where delta S prime squared is in the lab's frame of reference. So delta S squared equals negative 9 meters squared equals delta S prime squared equals delta X prime squared minus delta C squared T prime squared. So delta S prime squared equals negative 9 meters squared equals 30 squared minus 9 times 10 to the 16th uh, delta T squared. So minus 909 divided by minus 9 times 10 to the 16 equals delta T squared. So delta T is going to equal with some algebra square root of 101 divided by 10 to the minus 8 equals 10.05 times 10 to the minus 8. And let's remember that change in uh, position divided by change in time, delta x over delta t equals our velocity. So our velocity is going to equal 30 meters divided by 10.05 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. That is going to equal 2.98 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That is answer D. 
34. In an inertial reference frame S, two events occur on the x-axis separated in time by delta t and in space by delta x. In another inertial reference frame S prime moving in the x direction relative to S, the two events could occur at the same time under which if any of the following conditions. Uh, so I have a diagram that I've drawn for you below that's an example of our problem. Uh, the original separation in space-time is time-like. Uh, left side of the dash, uh, left side of the light light dashed line, and delta x divided by delta t is less than c over here. Uh, light-like is delta x over delta t equals c. That's the dashed line, and it's photons and massless particles right down the middle here. Uh, Space-like separation, which is the right side of the light like dash line is delta x over delta t is greater than c and that's over here. So we're going to refer to the diagram below and considering that these events were originally time-like for these two events to then be observed to happen at the same time they would have to be space-like uh, therefore moving therefore the moving observer would have to be traveling at delta x over delta t is greater than c. Um, so, note that for them to happen at the same place, uh, they could be time-like and would be realistic for moving observer to observe, uh, but that's not what the problem stated. Uh, so delta x over delta t would have to be greater than c, and that is going to be answer c. Number 35. If the absolute temperature of, the, of a black body is increased by a factor of 3, the energy radiated per second per unit area does which of the following? So our power divided by area equals the energy radiated per second per unit area. Uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law for an ideal radiator is the power over area equals a uh, constant times t to the fourth, again where sigma equals a constant. So power over area is proportional to t to the fourth. Um, so if you have a power over our area and you have it increased um, the temperature by a factor of 3, you have 3t three raised to the 4th, which is 81t to the 4th, where t is our original temperature. And so therefore, um, 3 raised to the 4th power is it increases by a factor of 81. Number 36. Consider the quasi-static adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas from an initial state I to a final state F. Which of the following statements is not true? Uh, so our fundamental thermodynamic equation du equals TDS minus PDV uh, and our ideal gas internal energy equals U equals CNT where C is our heat capacity and N is the number of moles. An isothermal expansion is the only type that maintains a constant temperature. An adiabatic expansion just means that there is no transfer of heat. All the energy is transferred as work. Uh, so we have ds equals dq over t equals zero. And so cn times dt equals du equals minus tv uh, equals minus pdb. Uh, this process is not isothermal. Therefore, the temperature is not constant. It varies with the volume. And so therefore, it must be answer E. temperature of the gas is not constant. That is a statement that's not true. Number 37. A constant amount of an ideal gas undergoes a cyclic process ABCA in the PV diagram shown above. The path BC is isothermal. The work done by the gas during one complete cycle beginning and ending at A is most nearly uh, so a clockwise process in the PV diagram is positive work. Counterclockwise process in PV diagram is negative work. BC is isothermal because delta T equals zero. CA is isochoric because delta V equals zero. And AB is isobaric because delta P equals zero. The area inside the curve is work. Point B is no further than about five meters cubed on the x-axis. Uh, so we will approximate the area inside the curve using a right triangle which will have a slightly larger area than the curved right triangle in the PV diagram. So the area equals 1 half base times height uh, equals 1 half times 500 minus 200 uh, times 5 minus 2 and that's going to equal 450 kilojoules. So since the process is counterclockwise in the PV diagram, the work, i.e. the area enclosed, is estimated to be about minus 450 kilojoules based on the rough approximations we did above. 
uh, since the answer must be negative, it must be less in magnitude than four, minus 450 kilojoules. As we stated, we made some approximations that did some maximum values. Uh, that only leaves minus 300 kilojoules, and that is answer D. Number 38. An AC circuit consists of the elements shown above, with R equals 10,000 ohms, L equals 25 millihenries, and C, and C an adjustable capacitance. The AC voltage generator supplies a signal with an amplitude of 40 volts and an angular frequency of 1,000 radians per second. For what value of C is the amplitude of the current maximized? Amplitude of the current is maximized when we have a resonant frequency, where the resonant frequency equals 1 over the quantity 2 pi square root of LC, where this uh, quantity LC is the square root. So W equals 1 over the square root of LC, and C equals 1 over W squared L. So our capacitance C equals 1 over the quantity 10 to the 3 squared times 25 times 10 to the minus 3. All of that is in the denominator. So C is going to equal 1 over 25 times 10 to the 3, and C equals 4 times 10 to the minus 5 where we're going to refer back to our chart for the micro unit conversion and so C equals 40 micro henrys. That is answer D. 39. This is a fun problem. Which of the following circuits are high pass filters? Uh, so it is all about measuring the voltage drop across the middle element compared to the other element. Uh, you want a higher impedance of the middle circuit element compared to the other element at high frequencies for it to be a high pass filter, an HPF. Uh, see the diagram for impedance and frequency relationships. Uh, I have this diagram right here for you. It's more of a um, relationship with some pictures than a diagram, but Nonetheless, very important to refer to this over here. So, number, Roman numeral number one. An inductor has a big impedance on high energy, so a large voltage drop. The resistor then has a medium voltage drop. Uh, the middle element voltage drop is therefore less than the other element voltage drop, so it's not a high pass filter. Uh, for Roman numeral number two, the resistor has a medium voltage drop and the inductor has a high voltage drop at high energies. The middle element voltage drop is therefore greater than the other, other element voltage drop, and yes, it is a high pass filter. For Roman numeral number three, the capacitor has a small voltage drop on high energies and the resistor has a medium voltage drop. The middle element voltage drop is therefore greater than the other element voltage drop, so yes, it's a high pass filter. For Roman numeral number four, the resistor has a medium voltage drop and the capacitor has a small voltage drop. The middle element voltage drop therefore is less than the other element voltage drop, so no, it's not a high pass filter. So, just as a side note, if the uh, exam was asking about low pass filters, for example, um, I have a diagram down here for you. So a capacitor that has a high voltage drop at low energies um, is a low pass filter, and so the resistor is still a medium voltage drop, um, where inductors would be a low voltage drop at low energies, low frequencies. So here's an example of a low fat pass filter. Again, um, question number 39 asks about high pass filters, and so that is answer D, based on all the logic applied on each of the Roman numerals one through four. Last one in this set, number 40. In the circuit shown above, the switch S is closed at T equals zero. Which of the following best represents the voltage across the inductor as seen on an oscilloscope? Uh, so V of T equals VO, the initial voltage, times E to the minus T divided by the quantity L divided by R. And time T equals zero, V of T equals uh, the initial voltage times e to the zero, uh, where e to the zero equals one, so it's going to equal the initial voltage equals 10 volts. Therefore, only answers d and e remain. Uh, L over r is our time constant and equals 10 uh, millihenries um, divided by 2 ohms equals 10 to the minus 3 over 2 equals 5 milliseconds. With this time scale on our time constant, it must be choice d. For example, at 5 milliseconds, v of t equals the initial voltage times e to the minus 1 equals 0.37 times the initial voltage. Uh, again, this agrees with the graph in the answer D.